The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 4. Tonight, from the deft and versatile pen of Mr. Ernest Canoy, a writer for whom our admiration grows with every passing week, we present Whistle Daughter, Whistle. Both Mr. Canoy and our fine director friend, Mr. Junkin, have been giggling through most of the afternoon's rehearsal. It is their sincere hope, and ours too, that you will giggle for the rest of the evening. In any case, garbed in calico and armed with a broom, Radio City Playhouse presents Attraction 4, Whistle Daughter, Whistle. Every Sunday morning, the New York Times brings you four or five pages of sweet, smiling pictures with little stories underneath. Ethel Glasgow, Wed, or Sue Potter, Plans, or Miss De La Vise, Betrothed, and sometimes just Jones-Smith. Who usually the pretty brides end up wrapped around salami sandwiches or spread out on the kitchen floor as the weekly wash drips water down their newsprint décolletés. But in Peggy Marks' house, the Sunday society pages last well into the week. Peggy's mother saves them carefully. Every night, she spreads them out on the dining room table after supper. Mrs. Marks loves wedding. Did you see this one, Peggy? Peggy. Huh? I'm talking to you. No? Did you read this one? Southampton. Mr. and Mrs. Alice Ted Allen Ma. of New York, Southampton, and Miami, a non-engagement graduate of the Spence School and Mount Holyoke. Isn't that interesting? Fascinating. Does it say what she got in freshman English? I don't see it. Maybe for the dark. Never mind, Ma. It says here she rides horses. I'll bet. Ma, you got the tact of a brewery truck. Hmm. Did you ever notice? Always the rich girls get the rich boys. It's fun. The scream. What's the matter with you tonight, Peggy? You don't feel well. Why don't you lay off? What's the matter all of a sudden? I'm just reading the newspaper, that's Always all. Always the wedding announcement. Do you ever read movie reviews to me? Or maybe the sports section? How coincidence. Yeah, yeah. They all look so happy in the picture. Why don't you quit needling? Needling? Who's needling? Her mother has a right to worry. The clock don't run back. Oh, all right, all right. So I'm practically brittle with age. I look like Lost Horizon. Ma, I'm only 26. What's the rush? There are a couple of guys I like, and a couple of them like me. I'll get around to it. It should only be soon. Oh, there you go again. Ma, I put in a hard day down at the office. From 9 to 5, I look into wide open mouths while the doctor fills the teeth. Give me a rest when I get home, will you? See? That's what I mean. If you had a nice husband, you wouldn't have to work so hard. I should have known I can't win. You know, they say our dentist makes a pretty good living. Hold it. Stop right there. Dr. Prentice is 45. He's got a wife, three children, and flat feet. And on top of that, I don't think he likes me particularly. I didn't mean that dentist. I meant the other dentist. What other dentist? The boy upstairs. He's just getting out of school this month. I met his mother over the washing machine in the basement. She has crouton curtains. Sort of crummy, huh? What? It's creton, Ma. Creton. A crouton is bread. Crouton. Creton. It covers the windows. Where was I? I won't talk. Oh, yes, yeah. the other dentist. He's a nice boy. I met him in the elevator. Is that the curly-headed one that gets out of the fifth floor? 5B, you know this, Tim? Ma, cut it out. I can smell a plot a mile away. I wouldn't say I would. Okay, then that's settled. <laughs> okay, Ma, I give up. What do you mean? Come on, get your coat. We'll go to a movie, then have a soda. It's a murder picture with Humphrey Bogart by Lowy. There's a corpse every two minutes. That ought to get your mind off orange blossoms. <laughs> Washing, I guess. Oh, hello, Mrs. Kellett. I didn't intend to having a washing machine in the basement. You remember the old days. Do I? Don't talk. Uh-huh. I still got a backache. <sighs> there. 
It's done. I'll be out in a minute. Don't hurry, Mrs. Mark. Rest yourself a while. That's what my boy always says. Ma, rest yourself. Your son is in college. He graduates dental school next month. No, isn't that nice? It's so nice to have a doctor in the family. I was telling my daughter Peggy, it's, ah, it's so nice to have a doctor in the family. A dentist. The same thing. You know, it's a real coincidence. You got a dentist? No, Peggy works for one. Oh, what do you know? Dr. Prentice downtown. But he's married. What? I mean, she isn't happy working where she is. Oh. My Peggy likes a position with a dentist. You know, Mrs. Marks, my boy Ellen gets out of school next month and I... Mm, no. What, Mrs. Kellett, why? No, not silly. I haven't sex say it. Mm, wouldn't it be interesting if... Yeah, yeah. Well, he's going to start practicing right after. Ah. Uh-huh. And you need a nurse in his office. Oh, now I see what you mean. It would be real convenient. It certainly would, maybe more. Why not, Mrs. Marks? Why not? Your Peggy is a fine, sensible girl. She certainly is, Mrs. Kellett. I shouldn't say it about my own, but if she was a perfect stranger, I couldn't say no different. It's only fair. And independent, too. Honestly, the way some mothers would strangle a girl in the apron string. A shame. I always say live, so you should let somebody else live, too. Ah, that's so true, Mrs. Wait, Kelly. Wait, Mrs. Marks, I just thought of something. Yeah. My aunt said something about a dance for graduation. So? You know, it isn't that he hasn't always got a lot of girls chasing after him. A dentist is quite packed. Of course, naturally. But I'm sure he'd just love to take your peggy. Well, you know, Mrs. Kellett, my Peggy's a very popular girl. She could have uh, three, four professional men, just like that. Naturally, Mrs. Marks, of course. But maybe she would just happen to have a free evening. Hmm, it wouldn't be so easy, Mrs. Kellett. Like I said, my Peggy's awful independent. I'm not telling you no secrets, Mrs. Marks. My yelling is like I'm you. When is the graduation then? Next month. A month. Ah, well, that gives us plenty of time, don't it, Mrs. Kellett? It certainly does, Mrs. Marks. Ow! So stand still. Oh. You want the dress should fit or not? Fit? Ma, you're sewing me in so tight I'll have to dance. Anyway. I want you should look your best. After all, you don't go to a graduation dance every night. If I could help it, I wouldn't go at all. Peggy. I just want you to know that you're not getting away with anything. What are you talking about? Live down tight. Uh, I knew what you were doing. You've been laying a trap for me for a month. You should shame All yourself. of a sudden. Peggy, why don't you get a new dress? Then still. Peggy, why don't you get your hair done? Don't you want to look nice? Sure, you got me like a fly in a spider web, like a rat in a trap. You could have said no. After you told him on the phone I was dying to go? That's what you said. Why, you know darn well that I said I'd die before I went. It's the same thing. Besides, you were in the shower. I couldn't hear. All right, Ma, all right. You got me strapped into this banana peel you call a dress. And you got me roped into this collegiate bra. Put down the hand. But I'm not going to like all it. All right, don't like it. Breathe in. If you zip that... Up the back, I'll never breathe out. Don't be silly. There. Ha! You look so pretty. Like a Cinderella. At midnight, I'll turn into a second molar. Well, where's young Dr. Kildare? He'll be here. He anxious. Might as well get it over with now, like an extraction. What did you say the young hopeful's name is? Ellen Kelly. Dr. Ellen Kelly. Right on cue. Ma, you look like a cat that's been eating canary pie. Go on, there he is. Don't keep him waiting. Well, you answer it, Ma. I've got to put my face on. Honestly. And Ma, so? I'll dance with heaven's gift to the American bicuspid. But that's all. Understand? That's all. Go already. All right, all right. Come in, come in. Mrs. Mark, I came for Peggy. Come in, come in. Sit down a while. She's inside with the face. Ah, a regular full dress, gentlemen. Now, between you and me, I rented it. It fits like a glove. Yeah, too bad it's a suit, huh? <laughs> so, so sit down. Oh. What's the matter? You're squashing your tail. Oh, oh thanks. So have a piece of fruit, maybe a tangerine? No, thanks. I just had supper. I know, red cabbage. You could smell it all over the house. Uh, Mom makes it sweet and sour. The best way. She uses vinegar for sour. Lemon. Ah. Uh. Well, lemon is good, too. My mama used to say... Oh, Peggy, this is Dr. Kellett. Dr. Kellett, this is my Peggy. Now go. Go have a real good time. Well, huh? I 
said, well. Well what? I don't know, just well. Oh. Peggy? Oh. You want to dance? Oh, sure. Sure. Uh. Something wrong? You're standing on my dress. Oh, huh. I'm sorry. Don't mention it. I said I was sorry. Okay, okay. Let's dance. Suits me. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, it's crowded here. Maybe we should have come earlier. I don't know. It looks like a long evening the way it is. I'll tell you tomorrow, Ma. Tomorrow? Oh, night I didn't close my eyes. Come in here. Look, I'm tired. Can't oh, I just... Oh, night I didn't slip a wink, not a pussy nap. All right, Ma. Turn on the light. Where till I get my coat off? Now, what is it? Now, sit down on the bed. Oh, my feet. You dance? I dance. I reckon there are real bend. Five pieces. All you could hear was the drum. Ah. A real fine affair. Did you go in a taxi? Yep. Young Dr. Callett flinched every time the meter jumped. So how did you like him? In detail or a rough sketch? Honestly, Peggy, sometimes I get so aggravated. You I... get aggravated. Peggy, before I bust, just tell me I wouldn't ask anymore. Well? Did you have a good time? No. Well, let me put it this I don't way. care which way you put it. He's a nice boy. I warned you before I went, Ma. Why can't you grow up? It's not your business to pick out a husband for me. This isn't the Middle Ages. My mama fixed it so I should meet your papa. Rest his soul. You're better than me. Oh, that isn't it, and you know it. What more would you want? That Helen is a nice boy. Ma. Even good looking. So what glasses? And a doctor, they look distinguished. I'm not going to sit up all night to listen to this. Who's keeping you? Only such a boy you should get. Look, Ma, my feet hurt. The zipper's jammed on my dress. I gotta get up early tomorrow, and I'm sick and tired of your nagging all the time. Peggy, get married. Don't quit. What did I say? Oh, no. I keep quiet all the time like a clem. I keep still. I'll never learn. To my grave, I'll go without a word. No one should know my daughter talks like a knife in my heart. Oh, please, Ma. A dentist isn't good enough. You want a millionaire, maybe? I'll let you know in the morning. Good night, Ma. Peggy. What now? You're sure maybe you didn't like him just a little bit? Hello, Mrs. Mark. You've been shopping. Oh, hello, Mrs. Kellett. I just wheeled the wagon all the way from Broadway. You shot by your supermarket? Since I got the grocery wagon, such an invention, it's almost a pleasure. Such a big load. <gasps> Mrs. Mark, mocha mousse. I didn't even know what it is, honest. In the supermarket, I just can't keep my hand <laughs> off the shelf. With me the same. If it's self-service, I buy like I'm moving to a desert island. You're waiting for somebody. I'm just standing. It's so nice out. In my apartment, we get some 10 minutes between 5 and 5.30. It's a novelty. We got a sudden explosion in the living room. You're lucky? Lucky. Hey, listen, Mrs. Kellett. In the summer, it's so hot, you could fry an egg on the carpet. You can't have your cake with frosting, too. I always say. You're right, you're right. Like, for example, Mrs. Winter. You hoy. If I hoy, it isn't enough how those son and daughter-in-law have to live with her, but that woman wouldn't even let them go by the movies alone. I saw Always the mama could drive a couple crazy. Such interfere. And it's some people. It shouldn't be you and me, Mrs. Oh, Kelly. such an idea. I'm not foolish. Uh, pa- pa- pardon me, Mrs. Mark, but... What is it, Mrs. Kelly? <laughs> well, I suppose I shouldn't tell. Thank you. Your Peggy, she had a good time last night. A good time? Oh, Mrs. Kelly. Did she? She woke me up when she came in. Honestly, I thought she was crazy. She had such a good time. She was laughing and singing like it was her first party. Honest? Look, I shouldn't tell you. I promised with a cross my heart I wouldn't tell you. Mrs. Mark, we're old friends. You wouldn't tell me. Did I say I wouldn't? Hmm. So, what was? My Peggy told me. Uh-huh. We shouldn't breathe our words. Like a tomb. She said, ah, I can't. Honestly, Mrs. Mark. She said she... 
She never met a boy like your Ellen before. She did. Well, not in so many boys. That's very interesting, Mrs. Mark. Very interesting. And your Ellen, how did he like that? As a dance? Well. He told you. My Ellen tells me everything. Of course, of course. Naturally, a boy like Ellen is very careful. So many girls keep throwing themselves at a professional man. And, uh, I don't mean you're taking Mrs. Mark. No offense, Mrs. Keller. So where was I? About Helen. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Well, well, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe it's a little soon, but I wouldn't be surprised. No. Why not? That Mrs. Marx, I got to go upstairs. Is the elevator fixed? Was out again. I had to walk downstairs. Honestly, I never feel safe since they put in that automatic elevator. I get cold shivers every time that door closes. It's like a coffin standing up. Mark my words, Mrs. Kellett. Somebody, somebody, someday is going to get caught in that elevator. It shouldn't only be us, Mrs. Marx. I can wood. <laughs> Oh, it's you. I'll take your parcel. Thanks. Five. Right. Five and six. Nice out. It'll do. What's the matter now? Duck. No. Well, that won't help. What do you do? You might push the emergency button. The red one. Oh. Yeah. Now what? We wait till Mr. Hector comes back from his pinochle game and gets us out. Hey, I can't stay in here. I'll be late for the clinic. Well, those unfilled incisors will just have to wait. Now, I can't figure you out. You have to? Here you go all around Robin Hood's barn trying to get me to take you to that dance, and then you keep needling me all the time. Wait a minute. I tried to get you to take me? My mother said that the very least thing I could do was... Hold it. Was... I begin to smell a maternal rat. I don't, I don't get it. Your mother told you I wanted a date. She said I would be a blessing to take you. Uh-huh. You should have heard my mother. He's such a shy boy. Do a good deed for one. Me? Shy? Like a violet, she oh, said. Oh, I'll be doggone. Yeah, make sure of it. Oh, why? Well, I don't know about you, but my mother will walk the earth like the ghost of Hamlet's father until I, well, get married. Oh. What's the matter? You're turning green. Every time I go out with a girl, my mother wants to know her family tree down to the roots. Alan, my boy, I feel the hounds closing in. <laughs> That's why you were sore the other night. <laughs> After the dancing, I had other reasons. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty bum at it. Two left feet. I've seen worse. You know, I was kind of mad myself. Last time my mother shanghaied me into one of those things, the girl outweighed me 50 pounds. <laughs> the last one I had palmed off on me turned out to be married. Claimed his wife didn't understand him. Uh, what happened? I walked home from Tremont Avenue. Uh, how long do you figure we'll be stuck in here? Depends on the meld. What? The meld. The score in Mr. Hector's pinochle game. Well, I'm going to sit on the floor. You care to join me, Peggy? Well, okay. Hmm. Read any good books lately? Hmm? Never mind. Okay, okay. Funny, isn't it? Uh, I mean, after all that finagling to get us together, we end up stuck in the elevator. <laughs> My mother would call it real romantic. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it is at that. Go ahead, bite your nose. It's ridiculous. What's well, ridiculous? You wait for a dentist now. You could wait for another but dentist. But I don't. But, wanna... but, but, but nothing. Your Dr. Prentice is all the way downtown. Oh, it's silly. What's silly? The same money and only four blocks away. Besides, he's such a nice boy. That's what I mean. Listen, I had enough. I'm up to here. You're stuck in the elevator for two hours. Finally, he asks you to work in his new office, and what happened? I say no. Ah, oh, what did I do to deserve such a daughter? I don't see what you're complaining about. Please, Peggy, let's talk calm. Don't get excited. Excited? Who's excited? Look, the boy asks she should wake in his office, right? Yeah. It's the same money and would save an hour every day from the supper. I suppose. So? No. Nah. And you know why. Why? There's a reason why. If I thought a hundred years, I couldn't find a reason. I could. 
tangled me into that graduation dance with Alan, you and Mrs. Callis. Now you're trying to haul me into that kid's office. I wouldn't be surprised if you pulled the plugs on that elevator. Such a thing to say. My, you're subtle like a bulldozer. Oh, why? Never mind. You don't fool me for a minute. I'll bet you've got the silver pattern all picked out. Nah, you talk fool. Maybe. Just remember, when I'm good and ready to get married, I'll pick myself out somebody. Then I'll let you know. Honestly, Ma, you act like this was China or something. All right, all right. Forget I said anything. Go ahead. Go downtown every morning on the subway in the rush hour. Go ahead. Get yourself smashed oh. in like a sardine. Come home with a black eye from somebody's elbow. Oh, Ma, please. All right, be adult. I wouldn't say another word. I'll take on. Why? Never mind, Ma. Only remember, I'm not going to work in Alan's office. You understand? Never. Sure, sure, never. Okay. Now, what's for dinner? <laughs> Another piece of cake with your tea, Mrs. Kellett. It's right in the bread box. Thanks, no, Mrs. Marx. I ate already two. Two? You had four, but have another. I wouldn't dare. I bust right out of my dress. I always see you. I use a saccharine tablet in the tea so I can take all the cake I want. It's good. It's from O'Brien. I always used to bake my own cake. <laughs> Me too. But O'Brien's is good. My Ellen always asks, Ma, how come you don't bake no more? When you got a man in the house, there's a reason to cook. Mm, I don't know. My mister would be happy if I had only pot roast and potatoes. Maybe a chicken once in a while. You got trouble. Every day my Peggy changes her diet. Monday she's eating cottage cheese, Tuesday's walnuts, Wednesday maybe whole wheat toast. It could drive a person crazy cooking lunch. Peggy comes home for lunch. For two weeks now, since she's waiting for your Ellen. Ellen doesn't even take off for lunch. She's working so hard. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kellett, I got a tea out for you from mine, Peggy. So tell me. She says, your Ellen makes her better up a plate than anybody she ever saw. Real pretty. He's a good boy. He says your Peggy works real hard. They look nice together, don't they, Mrs. Kellett? They certainly do, Mrs. Mark. So, Mrs. Kellett. So, what next? Thank heaven, such a day I thought I'd never see. Oh, take it easy, Ma. Are you ready? Did you pack the new shoes? Yes, Ma. And the fancy hair? Everything's all in. Stop fussing, will you? Who's fussing? Let's see. Should be something borrowed and something with the bluing. Blue, Ma. Blue. Bluing's for the laundry. So what's wrong? For our wedding, you shouldn't be clean. Oh, for heaven's sake, will you sit out a while? Who can sit? Her daughter only gets married once in a while. This one nearly didn't. <gasps> Ma, Miss Ma, the only reason I turned Alan down three times was because I knew you were hovering around like a buzzard waiting for a car. A buzzard? You called your own mother for shame. I'm not kidding. When I saw that triumphal grin of yours, I came close to calling the whole thing off. Except, I guess I could have loved the guy. Of course. I always knew my Peggy would pick out a good boy. Such a smart girl you were. I remember when you recited at the P.S. graduation. I'll cut it out, will you, Ma? You'll have time to cry later. How very him. My David, rest his soul, should be here. Yeah. I guess it would be nice. I always say it's nice to have a doctor in the family. A dentist. Dentist, doctor. He wears a white coat. <laughs> so does a barber. Only remember, Ma, I'm marrying him in spite of you. Not because... Naturally, naturally. Just for you marrying him someday, that's enough for me. Well, congratulations, Ma. You've earned them. Me? Nobody else. Thank heaven that's the last of it. Ma, you can rest now. <laughs> A beautiful wedding, Mrs. Marx. Lovely, Mrs. Kellett. Lovely. And it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to see a boy should get a nice, smart girl like your Peggy. A match, Mrs. Kellett, a match. Your Ellen will go far. Thank you. It's a load off my mind. Confidentially, I can tell you now. A secret? Not that I'd be interfering with Peggy. Oh, never, I'm saying. Neither me, Mrs. Marx. Always with Ellen, his own way. Her time is Mrs. Kellett. Sometimes I thought my Peggy would end up an old man. <gasps> Such a stubborn girl. Stubborn, Mrs. Kellett. You think maybe it was easy with my Ellen not interfering ever? No, never. 
But honestly, I'm not forgetting times I wanted to shake that fine dentist like a mop out the window. So right, Mrs. Keller. Yes. Don't I know? Well, it's done now. All over. All over. All over. Wait, Mrs. Kellett, wait. It's just beginning. You have just heard Whistle, Daughter, Whistle, as written by Ernest Kenoy and directed by Harry W. Junkin. Our two lovable mamas, Mrs. Callett and Mrs. Marks, were played by Lenore Garland and Mildred Clinton. Peggy was Jean Tatum, Alan Lamont Johnson. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shields. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. <laughs> Next week, Radio City Playhouse will offer another script by our director, Harry W. Junkin. It is the story of Hilda Bradley and a letter, a dangerous and a foolish letter. It is titled Special Delivery, and because we feel sure you'll enjoy it, we invite you most sincerely to join us. That's Special Delivery next week, Attraction 5, Radio City Playhouse. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.